Right now, we got a bunch of dudes, and we're just talking about this game manipulation X, Y, and Z, okay? Let me introduce another element into this. Make a baby, what's good? How you doing? Hi, you Daddy. Doing? What's up? How you doing? Girl. All right, let's, 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 because, what's going on here? Well, can, you, can you help us understand what, what, what is game to you in terms of uh, guys? Because I know you, 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 you've been around the club scene and things like that. You've, you know, guys and you and things like that. So, what are your thoughts and based on your experience dating? Do you feel manipulated when a guy comes up to you and put the moves on? No, that's the game. Okay, but I got something for this. Um, how much of their looks affects your perception of their actions, like how you attribute the character beside how they come up to you. Cause let's say you got, I'm, I would guess 50%. Okay. So like it's, it's a factor. It's kind of, the point yeah, that we're absolutely. It's based, it's, it's human nature. It's, I mean, that's why women look pretty to attract the male species, right? That's why men go to the gym so that they can look like they can protect a female, right? But at the same time, I've met some dudes that were on steroids that may have looked good, but couldn't do anything, couldn't fight, couldn't protect, and they were more simpy than anyone else. So at the end of the day, that's why it's 50%. Well, there we go. Wait, that's wait, that's can kind I ask of the question. Can I ask me a question? Okay. okay. You see, let's say, let's say you're in a club, okay? And there are 10 girls and 10 guys, mm -hmm. all right? Do you know exactly, do you put all of them, either I'm fucking them or I'm not fucking the position, or is there like a middle? You know, like maybe. No, I'm not a fucking animal. I'm not. No, like, no, no. I'm no, no. I mean, I mean, just roll, roll, roll with the, roll with the thought, okay? I mean, like, is it either I am going to, I like him or I don't like him, or there is a middle, there is a middle ground. Like, he needs to, I don't know, show me a little bit more. So okay, not money, so not status, anything like that. Just how we interact with you. Okay, I got you. So I will say this: we talk a lot about it because um, you know, Duke, we're on the Great Pill Podcast now. So that's where I'm repping, but um, it's it, it's it goes back to the first question. It has to do with game because I'll tell you straight away. There's been guys where I was like, not a chance, but they were so confident and so not aggressive but powerful, where it did not matter if I said yes or no. And they did a couple other things that were very attractive, and they were smarter than me, and and just. They were just more, they, they brought a lot to the table that made them more attractive. I wasn't attracted to them at first and all of a sudden I'm in their bed. So it's, there's no it's yes possible no. to turn a no into a yes. That's what you're saying. It's yeah, absolutely. No for, yes. any per, for any person, I believe that it is possible uh, and, and, to turn uh, a no uh, to a yes. Minka, Minka, I have to probe you, a little there. You, yeah, because he's going to, I know, I know they're going to probe and uh okay. dive deep a little bit all right and then could you see us go ahead because i want because because the thing is one thing is we can just sit here and have guys talk about this right and that's why i said woman yeah. who is not going to be afraid to let you know the real honest to god truth i yeah i, I hey listen i wasn't attracted to him he's ugly but he says i'm shit and now i want to fuck him or he didn't move in the kind of way now i want to vote so be as raw as you can with her all right, not no, hey, 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 you know me, you know gotcha. me. You know, all right, we don't want we all, you know, y'all running around with burning desire. You got all <laughs> angry earlier. I was like, oh, daddy. Hey, no, see, that, that's how I had come out in a long, long time, dude. That that dude, I tried to put away. I don't want to, I don't want to ever see that guy ever. So, like, it, it's crazy to just see how, like, because like, it's just, I almost, I, I felt like I was going insane. I, I, I don't, I don't want to hear the same argument, but continue. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> all right, she, you, you done? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead. Okay. I just, do you have anything more to say, Minka, or are you ready for us to probe? Go ahead and probe. All right. So you mentioned that the guy was confident, even though he wasn't like your usual suspect. Do you think he at least met some level of looks so that confidence, so you perceived his actions as confidence instead of, let's say, him being an asshole or him being arrogant or whatever? Because I, I can... From my experience, I've seen uh, some guys do the same thing and they can be perceived different ways due to attribution error because and implicit of, biases. I'll tell you the, the, the line that guys cross to get them to the point of they're just pompous assholes is there's when a guy is confident and he's rough around the edges with everyone else, 
but not with the female that he's trying to attract, that's confidence. When he then, if like I say something like he's joking jabs at me, but I say something back and then he takes that personally, that's when it becomes, oh, you're just a pompous asshole. So okay, he talks, want, so want, he talks his way out of it when he huh? does that, when he takes it a simpish way like that. And he what? took a jab. When he took a jab and he took it the wrong way and he took a personal like a simp. So that was um, no, talked, it's, it's, it, right? so let's say let's say you Virtuous. and I are joking. No, no, no. Let's say you and I are joking around and you keep making jokes at me and you're just like, uh, I, know Mika, I know what you huh? mean. I know what you Hold mean. Hold on, let me give the example for everybody to understand because with the way that you're saying it, only parts of it are understood. So I'm well, giving the whole platform. Well, let's let thing. her speak because we are kind of pointing her. Yeah. So like it's that. so it's so if you and I are like hanging out and you're trying to attract me and you are part of your game is that you're making jokes about me like oh you're so cute you think you're so tough and stuff like that right and I'm like who the hell is this guy right and so then I say the same thing to you you do something and I'm like oh you're so cute you think you're so tough and then you come at me because that triggered you in some way that just totally derailed that confidence to make you seem like you're just putting on a front or you're overly sensitive or you're just pompous and like aggressive and all the things that were negative all those positives suddenly turned into a negative and that's where i find that a lot of these guys that show off as confidence that's the line that they don't realize they tread you have to tread lightly on that line where you can be playful but not to the point where you're now attacking the girl that you're trying to attract if that makes sense yeah, well, I want to take a step back here. We've been mm -hmm. saying the word confidence a lot. I want people to like clearly state confidence in what regard? Usually, confidence is any tied regard. to a task. No, so like in, what, any what? regard. So yeah, I any regard. Okay, let's let me let's, let me explain it this yeah, way. You... Confidence comes from many different places, and it usually comes from some sort of power. Whether you have a lot of money, that brings power. Whether you're very attractive, that brings power. Let's say you're hosting the party, that brings power. All of those, or you're just a powerful influencer amongst a lot of people that are around, you're going to still feel powerful. And there's a lot of people that also feel power within themselves, that that's just how they carry themselves no matter where they go. So that's where confidence comes into. As a human being, you have to find what is your confidence, where you succeed the most, and you'll be able to walk into different situations with that confidence. Because you hear so many guys be like, just be confident, right? And like, they don't really give any context into that. If a man or a woman can find that power within themselves, whatever it is that makes them feel that way, they channel that feeling into whatever task they go on, they go into, they're going to continue to be able to bring that same level of confidence. Does that make sense? I get what you're saying. I don't necessarily agree with it because it said like, because some people- What don't you agree with it? Well, you're, well, you essentially say you have confidence in one regard and you bring it into the social interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, like, what? Well, like, let's say I'm, I'm really good at uh, fixing cars or whatever. Let's say I'm like Kevin. I'm really good at lifting weights. I can lift three plates. Guys, I can barely hear you. Uh, something up with my mic? No, no that's just he can't. He can't. I'll, um, Adam, Adam I think it's you, dude. Yeah. I think it's you. Yeah, I was just saying that just because you're good in some areas, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be confident in social interaction. And that comes with success over time. So like whether talking to someone normally that often comes in the work experience uh you're talking so let's let me, say you're a salesman let me then, stop you real quick yes yeah, so i'll let you continue so you just gave an example you're good at cars right so i just if, I, i'm not but i just I gave just, that as an example just, just as an example <laughs> i'll play so, along though okay so what's something that you're that you excel that you're the motherfucking shit you're the big dick motherfucker what is something that you excel in you personally uh like medicine science medicine science in what medicine regard science. specifically uh there's no decent amount of physiology just kind of a passion of mine training to become a doc okay so. perfect perfect so let's say i walk up to you and i'm like half naked right that's usually like what i dress like when i go out but i go up to you and i'm half naked and you're not usually like on your a game in those situations you're just like what the fuck but all of a sudden you find like you see like a mole on me or something that's like uh, of concern you may not be able to talk to me as like oh you're really attractive I really like you I enjoy your company but what you can do is you can talk about what you know and feel confident in that uh, conversation going into it once you have that feeling I didn't say like 
what I was trying to explain is human beings, we have the capacity to channel emotions into different places and situations. So that feeling of like explaining why it's worrisome, why I should go to the doctor, why I should go get it checked out, that's your in. And then you continue on with that same level of confidence associated with that feeling. It's about channeling it. That's not, it's not, does that make sense? Because it's, I'm, I, I'm, I've trained. I've trained different people in different ways on how to be able to approach people, not just in, and it's not necessarily, I didn't start this in like the dating thing. It was more in like job interviews and uh, public speaking and things like that. Yeah, Which is so the like, same shit. So, so if you're in the position <laughs> of public speaking, talking with people, you have a lot of experience and you've had a lot of successes. So you're confident in that area. But I wasn't. But you weren't, but you, but you had some wins over time. Like so you worked. The reason that I got it to takes that wins to become confident. Exactly, but it not just it doesn't just take wins. It also takes practice. I had to practice channeling what was important to me. So one of the first things, one of the first speeches that I had, um, it was on something stupid like uh, pollution, something that I did not care about, right? And I shit you not, I was awful. I had like hydrohydrosis. I was like sweating everywhere. Yeah. It was awful. The next one that I did was on human trafficking, something that I'm really passionate about. And I had a lot of facts on it. It was based on a book. And I, I the first one that there was like three um, tournaments, three different sections of the tournament. The first section, I fumbled it. I was, I was not good. I was trying to do it from the things that I wrote. And the second one, I spoke from my heart. I spoke from my passion. I spoke from what it really meant to me to like translate what I had written to the people that I was saying this in front of, right? As soon as I was able to channel that, the level of confidence skyrocketed. I won that one, I won the second one, and I went on to nationals. So it's, it's this is the stuff that I myself have had to go through and experiment and like practice and have those wins and learn how to channel that. And it's also something that I trained other people on how to do because it ties in so well into the dating realm, right? Because what do we want? We want like, if you're, it's psychological. If you're a shy person, you're gonna wanna go after the, that very outspoken, fun and bubbly person at the party. If you're a fun and bubbly person, you usually go for that, the shy, more reserved and, and closed off person that's at the party. Don't know why, but that's like the opposite to track, right? It's, and like, especially in like the general society, like I'm born and raised in LA. LA native. It's really, really different out here. <laughs> okay. um, so you you really have to practice being confident. And a lot of guys, like I'll tell my guy friends that are that are like kind of fumbling a little bit, like do the numbers game. If you're starting out, do the numbers game. Eventually, you're gonna get used to hearing no. That it does not hurt you. It doesn't affect you. It doesn't make you feel any less of a man. And then you're gonna find a woman that's looking for that level of confidence in a, in a guy that doesn't give a shit. And that's what happened to me. Like that example that I gave of like that guy that I said no no way to, motherfucker was confident than a motherfucker, dude. I don't know how it happened all of a sudden. I was like, damn, got what, me. What, what, was, what, 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 did that, what did he say that got you, feel, like I'm not, not, don't even have to say what he got you said, but what was it, uh, so the confidence like, was there a certain way that he put it on? Like, was it, how did it attract you to, for you to see beyond his physicalities, right? What, number, what was that? Go ahead. So number one was that like, he kept inviting me places. And if I said no, he did not take it personally. He did not make me feel bad about it. He was like, no worries, I'll, I'm gonna ask someone else. I was like, so the fact okay. that you even said that, that, that have you have you had guys that have been around you who in that same scenario they, they would try mad. to play those games? Yeah. Okay. They play That's some sort of game and it's like it's like go fuck yourself. I don't care. And, 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 but and because so sorry, I just want to say something really quick. Good. There is something that um, is said where it's like your your presence, when you remove your presence, it makes you more valuable. I can't remember the correct the like exact quote, but there's different variations of it, right? And so the biggest thing that I noticed that works for men, even for women sometimes, but primarily for men, is women were so used to the guys being like, I'm gonna give you everything. I wanna give you the world. I want this, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And especially when we say no thank you, even in the nicest way possible, being condemned for saying no thank you. But no, when a man, no one on this side will ever condemn you for saying no thank no, you. No, but self-made, self-made, 
tell me, I, I'm gonna, I just want to say this point because she's making a big point that you've made, and uh, I don't know if Kadeesh has made that, but especially uh, QB has also made this point, but I, I don't know what's going Looks on with right now. I, 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 I got... no, 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 not that, not that. He's making the point that what these dating coaches don't teach is how to handle this type of stuff. Right, they don't teach this type of stuff, this type of knowledge afterwards. Right, it's all the stuff for, on on how to pick up, pick up, pick up. But it's none of all these social cues. Right, okay, she says no. All right, you act out in a certain way with your emotions, not realizing that hey, okay, let me just act like I'm not even. Even if you have to act like it, I'm not exactly. right. Yeah, I'm cool. exactly. That I'm already exactly. separates me from a lot of these dudes. Because that's, that's the point that's I'm trying happened. to get. Go and ahead, that's what happened with this. Like, like I got a Let me get finish off here. Oh, yeah. let, let me get. Go ahead, self made, and then we'll let Mika finish. It's social adapt. I mean, like, if you didn't get the first win on your first, you know, debate, do you think you would have kept doing it and gotten better and better and better? I mean, you got a win, so you became confident, right? No, I didn't right. become confident right, right away. I, you, no, I got the you. shit beaten out of me the next tournament. Like, this but is the first practice. one you won, right? No, the, the first one no, she lost. The second she one. lost the first one. Uh, I mean, we're splitting hairs here. Like, I have, I have. That part like, doesn't matter. The bottom line is like. Confidence comes with practice. You're gonna fucking fall. You're gonna scrape your knees. You're gonna eat shit. You're gonna look like an idiot. Keep doing it, and it will not hurt eventually. That's the bottom line. You could dissect it any goddamn way you want to do it. Well, no one's trying to dissect it. No, I'm just saying. Hang on, self -made. Hang on, hang on, self -made. I'm just saying because because uh, this part doesn't matter. What matters is what I'm trying to say. What matters is this man. So the first party I went to with him, it's it was like. He invited me to be his date, right? And I finally said yes to him. I went to the party and I didn't, I brought a girlfriend. I made her look prettier than me that night because she was feeling kind of ill and I like gave her a new dress and everything. Her tits were fucking massive, right? They're like beads. So this motherfucker goes and he like kind of ignores me, right? Because he had already, I had already shown that I wasn't interested. So he kind of ignores me and he's like, hey, no worries about it. Like I've been busy all this entire time and, and I can see you're not interested. We're not vibing, it's totally cool. He's like, oh, okay. But then he starts talking to my friend. And, and what I'm trying to explain is the first time he tried to come at me or come for me, I was saying no, but he was keeping it very amicable and like it did not even bother him. Like I was just an option. It, I hate saying it that way, but a better way to say it is that he valued himself to a certain degree that my yes or no did not devalue him or and it did not increase his value if that makes sense mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah so the second time the interaction when i did go to the party and then he's talking to my friend i was like wow i really don't like it doesn't i'm not used to as a female especially in those situations with a guy that i'm not even interested not mattering i guess if it was the best way so competition it. female nature competition mode came in right get, get. <laughs> oh my bad i didn't understand what you said what i said female competition female no, nature no, competition no. mode came in did you get with him then after that after he wasn't I, paying attention to let you me, let me finish it didn't have to do with the female competition i'm just just asking. because i know that's why i'm trying to clarify because it didn't have to do with the female competition i think that's where we get it twisted it had more to do, more than anything, it had to do with the fact that he was like showing himself as a man's man. A man's man doesn't give a fuck if a girl says yes or a girl says no. He's still having the party. He's got a lot of shit going on other than trying to chase pussy, other than trying to chase girls. So it, my, my presence, like, although he was being like kind and generous and like um, gentlemanly, very gentlemanly, never disrespectful, not once. I did it, whether I said yes or no didn't bring value and didn't it didn't do anything for him. So I was safe in a situation where like we we still kept talking, but he made it very clear of like, oh, this isn't reciprocated. Don't worry about it. I'm good. I need something that's going to reciprocate. So what ended up happening after that? This is now the third time that we were meeting. He invited me to to dinner with a couple of other people, and this other girl was like a mess, and it was just. It was cool though because we were all hanging out and the entire time he kept complimenting me not on my looks Not on the, the usual things that guys compliment on but rather he was looking at me and he's like This is why I really like her because she's so confident. Look at the way she's sitting Just pointing out different things in front of people right because girls we love compliments We like did good attention and so we went back to his place and like again completely gentlemanly and like you can stay or you can go whatever you'd like by the end of it he's like 
making moves and like I'm allowing it because this whole time he's been showing me like his val his value is very high. And that's the part where I feel like all these dating coaches don't implement that enough. It's like a numbers game or a tactic with like different people instead of showing you like each individual person whatever you are you have something of value to bring to the table. So if you resonate with that and you bring that to a full throttle, whatever it is, you can get more you are how do i say this you're going to be more of a bachelor and you're going to be able to attract rather than having to chase okay and, right. oh yeah. you, you got more or okay yeah. so you <laughs> okay I, i'm just going to break down what you said for a little bit um i i do have a slight rebuttal to your um debate thing, debate thing but that would be splitting hairs i want to hit the main point first before i get to that rebuttal uh, what you're talking about is like confident in your own abilities and confidence in your manhood. I wouldn't, I want to avoid using the word confidence because it's often mistaken for within the situation. So when you say be confident in women, people are delude themselves into saying, oh, I got to be confident that I'm going to, I'm going to get the, this outcome. That's what people mis no. mistake it as. Yeah. So let's I, I would clarify rather that. Use, I'd rather use the term self-assurance. Know that you're going to be chilling no matter what happens. I got all this going on. Uh, my life will still be good after this. I, it's just, just input and output so, that I can learn so from it. That's the actual problem is that people have misconceptualized the meaning of confidence. Confidence doesn't come. People in society make this in like, okay, you got, you had both the dudes, right? One dude is like, I fuck these bitches and showing these pictures. You shouldn't fucking show the pictures to begin with. No one should be able to call you out to put yourself in such a level that you look like an idiot. The other one's yelling and not being able to like listen to anything that anyone is saying and you look like a fucking moron too, right? Neither one was bringing confidence because they were both basing their own value off of the external things that were happening. Confidence is a something that is coming from within where you actually say, I'm the motherfucker. But, but the, the key the key point that I'm making, though, is whenever you say the word confidence, you have to say in what regard you're confident in when you say that. Confidence is Okay, an and, and dealing thing. with women and picking up women and talking so, and to women it. and approaching women and, and, and not even not even. So I'll, letting, I'll not tell it. you in that regard, she's not she's not telling you to be confident in that regard, because if you were confident in picking up women, you would go in being like, all right. I'm going to bag this one. That would be confident in it. And I know it's going to happen. That's what confidence in that regard would be. Confidence in the regard she's saying who's to is say, in the self-worth. Who's, who's to say that the, 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 the man that she was just referring in her example didn't play another uh, a version of that. But he wasn't confident he in the fact. He, he was confident within himself. Well, if, that's if he's exactly what he's Well, if, he, if he's, if he's six, that's, that's being confident in your self-worth. That's, that's being self-assured. That's, that's not, my point. That's my but, point. But, but, but I was, I was now, going now it like you're splitting hairs, though. No, it's important to say because when you're confident, you're confident in a specific regard when you use that term confidence. When you say tell someone to just have confidence, it's it's very open up. What are well, they what confident was the context, in? What was the context in which she was referring to confidence to? That's well, what she, we're talking she, about. Now you're trying to extrapolate. No, no, she's agreeing with my stance on what guys should be. I'm just saying that a lot of people misinterpret that when they hear confidence. Okay, that's a lot of people, but that's not what we're talking about here, though, but right? I'm saying it, it, it gets mixed up because they're saying, oh, we're not mixing that girls. up over here. So the de no, I'm the not saying that. I'm just, I just want me... people who are listening to... Right, and so I understand they all see where it. you're coming from. There, it's, But that's why I was saying it specifically in that manner, that confidence is something that comes from within. At no point did I say you have to be confident going up to a woman. At no point did I say you have to be confident that you're going to get the woman. At no point did I say any of those kinds of things. I said, you have to be confident within yourself. Whatever she fucking says, does, acts, behaves, whatever, you're confident within yourself that you're the motherfucking shit, with or without that bitch. And, and you keep a safe environment and you can continue complimenting her and you can continue saying, I like you and see what happens. Nine times, like, I'm gonna tell you, I'm going to say this, as women, we are so used to, especially like if you're going after an attractive woman, right? We are so used to the guys like playing games, saying, I'm gonna give you the world, saying, I love you, blah, 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 damn that fat ass, and all this crazy shit. Chill off talk. That, that, the, <laughs> that the ones that stick out the most are the ones that are confident within themselves that just want to have a conversation. Yeah, I just want to say that though, that 
that's not clear when you hear the statement just be confident bro but i never said just be but that's what guys bro. say in the in and the, that's, that's what guys say in the sphere that's what and guys that's say why in the sphere. I touched on that's what we aim to, 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 to break it. down so yeah, a lot of guys do it because we're trying to fill, because, uh, fill in the holes a lot of these dating guys conveniently skip over to sell courses that's just what it i is. have a framework and for then, this can i talk about well, it go, go, go one ahead, second ahead. because i have one thing to say right after minka right after minka kevin you can go because instead what your solution is is to change the verbiage because it's been tainted instead of using the actual words that, sh that have been tainted well, no 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 saying confident coaches. is incomplete saying be confident you have to say it in i what didn't regard. say be confident i did that, say that's in not what, what she said no i'm not saying what you're saying but i'm just saying just saying having confidence that's not a complete thought right right but that, that was never said so that's actually null and void because that's nothing that was said out of my mouth in this well, context I, yeah, or in this I'm, conversation but the question I had was about what is confidence in general? What, what do people mean by that when they say it? And I just want to clarify that when people are giving that advice. And I did. And I explained confidence yeah, but I just, is a feeling I just that want to you make have it, of your wanna... own value within yourself. Whether or not anything happens externally, you are still perfectly but... fine and more than content within yourself. You have the confidence within yourself that you're good no matter what. That's Duke, a level of Duke and, and Duke and Caduceus are just trying to drive it home for the audience. And then yes. I think yeah. Kevin's going to too. No, because I, I say that because here's the thing. What she's saying is exactly what I say on this stream. Like, it don't matter. Like, the, the, the only thing y'all need to accept is the moment right now, right? All this future, the past, it doesn't matter because you can't go back to the past and you don't exist in the future. All you have is now. And what you have to do with the 24 hours is what you have. So, yep. literally, bro, like, it, when we're saying confidence, confidence, like, this is all you have. Take advantage and go. But, That's yeah. it. And people aren't. I'm teaching. I'm giving you an example of, of these coaches will tell you how to get these bitches left and right and how to spit game and how to do all these things. And they'll tell you, just be confident, bro. They don't tell you how to transmute that confidence from where it comes from, how to practice it, how to go into it, how to create that safe space for a woman to come back and maybe fuck her later. They don't create, they don't tell you- Myron says, things. kick him out. He says, call another bitch to kick him out. Like, this is when, I, when, I, when, I, when I do, yeah. when I is hear that, stuff that like that- Is that the real role like, in the chat? No, it's a, it's a troll. Fake. It's a wannabe. <laughs> Fake one. Can I, can I, can oh, I ahead, talk? Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I'll okay. yeah. So I actually do have a framework for uh, all of this. I was actually talking about it with some people the other day. So I think the reason that this discussion becomes kind of confusing is because we tend to conflate confidence, courage, and self-esteem. So self-esteem, the way that I view it, is self-esteem is kind of your overall view of yourself. So if you have positive self-esteem, you believe that you deserve to have hot girls, for example. Now, when it comes to confidence, I actually agree with you, Caduceus. Confidence comes from confidence in the sense that you are confident that, so for example, if I drop this beer, uh, beer bottle right now, uh, am I confident that it's going to hit the floor? The reason that I am yes. is because every single time I've ever dropped it, it's hit the floor. Now, on the other hand, so, so that's confidence, right? That comes from confidence. But how do you go, how do you bridge the, the gap from fear, so let's say fear of approaching a girl, to being confident? The bridge between those two things is courage. So courage is where you have fear of doing something, but you do it anyway. And that's very difficult to do. But the more times that you do that, this has actually been proven with uh, psychology through a process called automaticity. The more times that you do that, it becomes an automatic process in your mind you almost have this unconscious uh, kind of software to say, oh, every single time that I've approached a girl, I didn't feel like I was gonna die because your amygdala is exploding and you know your fight or flight response and everything's exploding. But because let's say, for example, you've approached 200 girls in your life because the worst that ever happened was a girl just saying you're an idiot or whatever, you have more of that confidence that, uh, that you can do it. So you have less fear. So yeah. I think the goal is to use courage, get over your fear to, to do something. The more times that you overcome that fear and you do it, the more confidence you build to the point where um, there's things that used to be scary that aren't scary anymore. So Minka, I think you talked about this earlier. I think you said you had a sales background. For me, the first time I did the first No, I have a marketing before. background, but that's, you're saying okay. exactly what I said earlier. Okay, okay. Well, so, Kevin, so can I pause one, you more on thing, one more thing, one more thing, okay. one more thing. Okay, one more thing. Um, when I used to work in, when I first started doing sales consultations, dude, I was nervous as fuck all the time, the first few times, but I got less nervous each time to the point where a few years down the road, like I would like have zero nerves at all because I built up that confidence. But in order for me to get to that point, I had to 
use courage to get over that fear. So some of like the really advanced pickup guys, um, the ones who claim to have zero approach anxiety, um, assuming that they're telling the truth, it's, I think it's technically possible if they've done like 10,000 approaches, right? So anyway, that, those yeah. are my thoughts on that. I think it's important. I think the, the comment section was saying we're arguing semantics and stuff. I think it's because it's important to make sure that you have a distinction between confidence, courage, and self-esteem. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with the, a lot of what you're saying there. I just wanna make an important distinction in your example with approaching. Um, when they approach and they don't, they might get rejected and they realize, oh, that's not the end of the world. I might've had some good conversations. Uh, you, you don't get confident that you're gonna get laid from that. You're gonna get, you're get confident that, you're only getting confident in that the world isn't gonna end and you're gonna be good. And that's in that the regard. first step. And, and, that's that, and that, that, that is the first step. That, yeah. well, that's literally like, the first, once you get past well, that, then you're gonna be confident. Can I, can I finish, can I finish my point? Yeah, finish, finish you're right, point. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was like, for me, for example, like I, I'm at the stage where like I'm able to screen, like when I'm in a club, I'm like, all right, she's interested in me, she's interested in me, she's interested in me, and I can pick between those and then save my time. But that took a bit of time. That took a bit of time for me to realize signs of attraction from the start. And so I can, I don't have to approach as many. That took, that definitely, so I'm confident I can go into a place and figure out what, whether someone wants me or not. Because it took time and I had wins. And I think, yeah, once you got a win and a couple wins under your belt, and when you go into a situation, if you don't know signals and you don't know, like I said to Duke before, I'm like, sometimes the dude is so not socially adept that his boys got to be like, that girl wants to bang you, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And guys See, don't. This, this is what I'm talking about. You see, at the end of the day, though, like, I, we can all see we can all see the point. We can all see the point here, man. It, it comes down to it. And, and going back to what Minka was saying, and I, I say this all the time, man, no matter what happens to you, man, you can live life that you will be okay. Because the first person, before you go even go to trust the world, you got to trust yourself first. You got to trust right. yourself that no matter what, I'll be okay. When I go out there and I'm, I'm knocking on doors and shit, selling knives, I got to trust myself that even though that door says no, the next door says no, the third door says no, the fourth door says no, I'm going to be okay. Because the shit's going to suck for a bit, but it's not permanent. And that's yep. life. Everything changed. That's the only thing. We're destined to change. The situation we're in is not going to be in this. We're not going to be in there forever. So you got to trust the fact that, hey, it starts with this, that the situation that you're in, it's not going to be the way it is forever. That, oh, and once you can acknowledge that, then you can start to understand the concept of change. Then you start to, you, instead of dreading what's going to come, you start to accept what's coming because you know, it's like, oh, fuck it. Let's get it over with right now. Right, mm -hmm. with the same mentality I have. Let's get it over with right now because that was all I got. I don't have tomorrow. I don't have, I, I can't go back to yesterday. I got now. So let's take, what, what can we do right now? Well, I think that's you where it, it becomes, it becomes a problem. Stuff, baby. It becomes a problem with a lot of men. Yeah. And I don't know, I mean, Caduceus were kind of talking about this is when you make a woman the center of a universe and you know, even when I'm not responding to texts from a girl, and then she flips off because I'm not responding to a text because I'm a busy dude and I'm doing other things. You know what I mean? And I, I'm not one of those guys that say, hey, you know, wait three days before you text her back. But there's sometimes you can't get to what you're doing because if you're not making a woman a center, a center of your universe, and I'm not trying to be Rich Cooper and sit here and say, do the work, but I'm just saying. Oh, that, that, that's a scam. Yeah. If you're just out there doing your purpose, women are the byproduct of that purpose majority of the time yeah but it's also like i have such a problem with that because i if you're spitting game and you're just trying to get laid i 100 percent agree like women should not be the center of your universe people should not be the center of your universe period but they should be a part of your universe if you are interested in them and if it's the right but that's, person but that's what the whole coaching game thing comes around is like which women is why the i said world. i haven't which is why i have an issue with it because in yeah the, like in, we're, in we're, regards there's two separate things in regards to picking up girls don't make them the center of the universe absolutely if you know she's got bro if you know she's got an only fans you know she's like got sugar daddies and stuff you better not make her the center of the universe but if you got a good one that you actually like and you're on this fucking coaching bullshit, you're going to fuck up the, th the potential that you might have for a happily ever after or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And that's the issue where these guys, they, they don't, 
they have a hard time and they sign up for this coach where they could probably just save a bunch of money if they just went up to 100 girls and tried to ask for their numbers to get over that fear probably just what save a lot of money they're trying to skip over the pain right that's what they're and doing with these courses no such, it's shortcut through the pain right but and you have to suffer to understand what they do what, what what to value what really matters you gotta suffer that's why i tell and, all these people yeah. all the time you need to go out there and suffer like fuck all these books fuck all these theories go out in the real world because that'll teach yeah, you yeah okay, really, really quickly really quickly fucking live and then the, the second portion of what i was gonna say go live your really life. quickly but the Make second up. portion so but the second portion of what i was gonna say was and i'll shut up right after is if any of you guys that are signing up for these courses and you learn some shit, you learn how to pick up girls and you find someone that you do like, learn the distinction and don't keep using these things that you've learned in this metasphere and everything in a relationship because you're going to fuck it up. That's all. Well, I, okay, so make up all of that really quickly. Hold on, hold on. So you all of that. Game your wife like Rolo Tomasi? Is that what you're telling us? He had a question first. Okay. No, let him go, let him go. That's all right. Let him go. So, Minka, let me ask you this. So your advice would be to, and again, right now I'm not selling a dating course, anything like that, okay? I was associated mm -hmm. with one before. I wasn't a dating coach, all right? Contrary to popular belief. Mm -hmm. But I do. I will ask you this because, um, so you said, oh, well, a, a guy could save a lot more money just by approaching 100 girls than hiring help. Doesn't need to be a dating coach, whoever. What if he was so terrified of approaching uh, one girl even that he couldn't do it started sweating everything he, he froze up literally just couldn't move what, what would you advise him to do grow some balls that's life okay. that's so, the problem and, with so all of this is that honestly good good luck saying that, that is, to somebody that is, is that seriously me. what you would say you asked me the question so let me answer it that is the problem with all of this is that instead of facing fears and it's it's humanity at stake here where instead of facing fears and walking through something which you in your own words described as courage which you in your own words have said you have to go and do it and have that courage to do it yes but you can have baby steps uh going up to that point rather than and just I, throwing and yourself in the water and I gave him so, I wanted to, so your advice was grow some balls. Do you no, have else? I, I said that sarcastically. I already gave you another portion right now. And I gave one earlier when I said uh, one of the guys, what was it, self-made, said that he's into medicine and he's more into, he's very, that's where his like, his no, shit that's is. The he's the most self-made is the DJ. No, no, I, I, I want to tell you guys, I want to showcase to you guys what coaching oh. actually involves. So, so I want to oh. ask you, Minka, if somebody is Can terrified. You asked me, so I'm sure. Hold on, hold on. Sure. So, so what would you tell him other than grow some balls? Like, what would you actually tell him? I've already said. Well, okay, so we need to rephrase that statement. It was a joke. It was a sarcastic remark. So you can let that go instead of continuing to repeat it to prove a point. Number one, I've already said you have to take the baby steps where you have to have the courage, which were your own words to say that. The second, the first thing that I initially said earlier was if you have something that you are really good at. You need to utilize that and channel that in your approach. So like, whether it's like looking at a, a, let's say you're a dermatologist, you see a girl's skin like, oh, I do this, this, and this, like make it a work thing. If you uh, like music and you see a girl listening to music, you can ask her, what kind of song are you listening to? I really found, or I just found this, you might want to take a look at it. Anything that can be helpful to a female like that's why the idea of like buying a girl a drink is something but we want to have a conversation starter so the conversation starter girls are really good at this we look at shoes and we're like oh my god those are so, i'm good at, like that's like i've had to go through this i've gone to girls i'm like those are such cute shoes they could be the fucking ugliest shoes in the world but i'm gonna tell her those are such cute shoes where did you get them from who are they from they look so good you're so cute where are you from then i start asking more questions right because the vibe, the vibe is already starting. It's the same thing with men approaching women. Obviously, you're not going to ask about shoes because then you might seem like you're not interested in that way. But you could ask her things like, "Oh, you don't seem like you're from here. Or you seem like you sound like you have, kind of have an accent. Are you from the Midwest? Are you from New York? Are you, where are you in school? Are you want to ask questions to a female? That's all it is. If you okay, ask so enough questions, you're going to start breaking the ice and having more of a yeah. The, the reason so, that I asked this is because, hold okay. on, this is really important, guys. It's really important. The reason that I asked this is because I actually have coached guys in person about what to do when they freeze up and they feel like they can't move. So all that stuff still, 
like even just approach like like they they lock up to the point where they cannot even go up to a girl and even say words much less look at them so i'm asking you again this isn't like a test or anything i just want to go to show you that coaching does exist because i will tell you what i would do and what i have done with my clients because you you said before that basically hiring a coach is a complete waste of time right so what would you do in that situation you're, you, you're kind of putting words into my mouth you're kind of putting a lot of words no 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 no, because because the example that you gave still Mm -hmm. made it so that he had to go approach the girl i'm saying he cannot go approach the girl what does he do in order to be able to eventually um, i just want to be straight up and clear and be real respectful here before i get disrespectful i'm i'm asking you nicely not to put words in my mouth because the way that you're twisting it up and making it sound like i'm talking is very different from what i'm trying to convey the message i'm trying to help you that's all i'm trying to well, do i know you're trying so to help I'm just, I'm just, I'm like, I'm just, i don't just, know why I'm you're just, taking offense on. to this i'm just asking you i'm not taking offense to it all i'm saying so, is so what I, I think i think what, what he's trying to get at is so he's trying to i hear what point. he's trying to get so, at. like no no no, no. he's just, not saying i don't think no no no, no. I, I think you're misreading the situation like i, I think i think you're misreading the situation because mm-hmm. I, I don't know if he says you said that or if it was uttered but a lot of like so it, what we're trying to say is there's a, this room for coaching and a lot of times part of that coaching too as well is getting the fuck out there just like life's right. a fucking coach the same thing and a lot of guys a lot of these guys see the thing and, and part of what uh uh date uh kevin does with his program and things like that is the infield stuff right and a lot of these right. guys who because we can we and this goes to Kenesha's points too. We can say grow some balls, but a lot of guys are gonna need a stepping stone, right? Like a direction, totally. right? You're gonna do that. So we're all so on the same I, page, but he's trying I, to just make a point. So right, the, and I get that. Uh, but let, the way we're, that we're it's, good, we're good. And I get that, but the way that it's coming off is that you every time you're repeating what I'm saying, you're not actually repeating it exactly, and it makes it sound more stern than what I'm actually saying. So I'm just asking respectfully right now so that we can continue having mutual respect. I'm saying that no, for. That's fine. Yeah, I, that's I didn't. Fine. I didn't mean to disrespect you at all. Yeah, he's I, not. I apologize. Yeah, and that's why I think it's way. Some, yeah, he was just asking. Yeah, I, I don't know why. I think, why. I think, yeah. I think it's just because it was being repeated. It was just yeah, like. It made it, I, it I was. I was just saying, like, look, when because uh-huh. I know it was as a joke, the whole grow some balls thing, but. Unfortunately, a Which lot of is, people do say that as advice. So yeah, the man again, up. Like, fresh and fit. You know, fresh and fit does that. that, that Hi, guys. Uh, this, that, if you're that, depressed, that, just uh, get over it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which Myron's is why like, I was re-explaining and I corrected myself. And I just want to make sure we continue to have the correct explanation and communication. No, we're all the same that's yeah. all. So, again, all right. So, that's fine. Can I explain what I would do in that situation? Can I? Let me answer your question. Hold up. One of the things. Let him, let him, let him reiterate that so then so we can go and then you can uh get that quote i understand she can, him. She can go she i can, go. I can she say go. yeah oh, okay, I, I got okay. him i got him he's good yeah yeah go um, ahead you can go so okay one of the things, answer, and this is and this is why i say look when i said coaching you could save a lot of money instead of the coaching what i meant by that were the books what i meant by that were the sermons what i did not mean by that and you have an amazing point is a coach that actually holds your hand and walks you through the process and goes with you. Like if you, let's say I'm a dude and I'm scared to talk to a, a, any girl, right? In the same scenario that you're giving. And you say, I'm a coach, I can actually walk you through this entire process. And you go with me to the bar and you show me how it's done and you approach a girl with me. And you do it enough times so that I start getting comfortable. And you kind of like shove me to do it on my own. That's actual coaching. That is actual, true coaching. They have it in sober companions they have it with approaching of the opposite sex they have it with interventions they have it with interviews that is the genuine part of when people are actually charging for a fee that i respect it's the other stuff of like because a lot of the coaches will say just do it just be confident just do it like like that's the stuff that i have issues with and i agree with you on that part no so we're on the same page well, i think yeah. it was just a miss i think you thought that he was Taking what you said seriously. No, 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 no. As a grown parent, we understand what you're saying to each other. Right, 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 right. No, no. So we're on the same. I was just trying to clarify that. So we were. So the guy in the chat, because I know we got some. uh, uh, So so I'll tell you. uh, you uh, Do you want to do this? Can I get a question, or do you want Kevin? Yeah, yeah. And then we gotta start closing up shop. Wait, wait. Can I just say what what I would do in that situation to help? Because I've done this with guys. All right. Yeah. So and again, the rest of you guys, you can use this if you want, because I know, especially the black girl guys, and this is a very normal thing, is to have. Uh, Because I used to deal with social anxiety a lot myself. People don't believe this about me. A lot of people don't. But I was like a mute in high school. I was just like too nervous. I couldn't even like say like just like be around people. So something that I helped guys out with, especially when I was in Vegas doing it in person, is it's 
I, I would just go approach a group of girls and, you know, just say whatever. And uh, I would, instead of me being like, hey, you go do that now, that's like, that's like me asking them to like jump off a cliff in their mind, right? Because they haven't experienced it. So what Caduceus was talking about before, they don't have the confidence built up because they've never done it before. So instead, what I would have them do is more sort of baby steps and be like, look, go the next person that walks by first, just say, hey, that's it, right? It could be a dude, girl, doesn't matter. Hey, cool. So you say, hey, to five different uh, let's say old guys. I mean, we're in Vegas, there's people everywhere. And then after that, you turn it to females, say hey to five different females, cool. Then after that, you say hey to five uh, young women, cool. Then you say it to attractive women, cool. After that, you say, hey, how are you? Like, look, that's just one example, but um, I think a lot of times that's, that's one way to get over social anxiety because a lot of the things that I teach and coach, again, I'm not the dating coach, I help guys with social anxiety because that's something that I used to uh, suffer with in myself. And that's the main thing that along with uh, the fitness stuff that I was doing with with Coach White Bill. But I just wanted to, to talk about that because people are just like, well, what do these, you know, pick up coach guys even like do? It's, it's stuff like that, you know, and I learned that through being a fitness coach for a while. But if anybody's curious, like what coaching even looks like, it's shit like that. It's, it's meeting somebody where they're at and then whether it's social anxiety, whatever, it could be any form of coaching. I do the same thing with personal training, right? I don't just automatically have them go try to do a deadlift. They'll be like, hey, can you like pick that something off the ground first? Oh, is that tough? Okay, well, let's back up a bit, right? So it's more so meeting people where they're at. So I know, I'm sure Minga, you agree with this, that you said before no. you agree with coaching and everything, but I wanna, yeah. I want people to understand what true coaching is. It's not like saying these yeah. magical words, <laughs> right? Well, well, I, 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 I have a question, question for Minka. Approach anxiety, it's stuff yeah, like go that. ahead, go ahead, can you I got, I got start, a, I got start a, I got a question for Minka. I asked Kevin this question, so I'm just being fair here. Okay. It sounds like a lot of your background is in social calibration, getting people to pick up on social skills when they're in the conversation. Where's the qualifications where you can give men dating advice? Because I'm not seeing it because a lot of what you're saying is after you've already had a base level of interest and you're already in conversation. I never said I was a dating coach for men. I'm not I've saying I'm not saying that. I'm just no, saying no, that a lot of people are treating you like the arbiter of truth. I just want to. Well, bring that's that. But that's no. what a lot of people are treating her. But that's not what she said. Like we I'm not. No, no, I'm, I'm trying but, but, to but, but, reel the chat in. But I know you're reeling the chat in, but that's not like listen. Listen, like I'm saying Here's, stuff like like David Little talking about this doesn't uh, uh, apply to the everyday guys. What do you mean by that? Are you saying the everyday guys are are, are, are what? All right, listen, everyone has different tools in their tool chest. And I want to tell you this once again, all right? If you're if you're naturally good looking, the guy gave you those freaking uh, gift, right? Then you use that and then you add a little bit of a, a language to it to solidify that game. If you're born ugly, short and fat or whatever it is and you can fat something you can change. But if you're born ugly and there's something you can't change, well guess what? Go make some money because I got I know dudes right now with no legs that are getting their dicks up, okay? They go get some money, you'll pay for it. All right? And don't uh, don't look bad about it. Don't want to, you're fulfilling a need either way. And I don't I don't get what this what, what this uh, so confused. What are we confused about? What are we confused about? Go find you a tool and put in your tool chest if you're not born with whatever tool that you need. So why are we arguing on looks? If you're not fucking good looking, go get you some money. Okay, no, no, that's not the everyday guy. Yeah, go get to a country where the box is cheap and you go pay for it. Yeah, I why agree. Why are we arguing with this stuff, man? Well, the, the, the general well, the context. Men, well, the general, no, you want to ask what you need to I, do. I have an answer to, to that. The box. Hold on, hold on. The general context, I have an answer to that. The general context of this conversation was how guys can do to get results, get success. Yeah, I've heard social calibration in a way and that only gets that only gets you once you're already halfway there so i gave an example the question that i answered was actually have i ever had a guy that i said no way to and then ended up hooking up with him that was but, the question that i asked let me finish that was the question that i answered so that's all it was then we got into social calibration into dissecting why it happened and I'm not a dating coach. My background is in psychology. I have a degree in marketing. I was a, a CCAP certified, so I am certified to be a counselor. Uh, same as like licensed marriage or uh, uh, MFTs, but I still have to be signed off by MFTs. 
and like that's why i agree with this lot like alex's uh super chat of like for people with social and i'll help you with, <laughs> i'll help you uh for people with social anxiety go see a professional not a coach or a youtube coach with no credentials because as someone with credentials i will firsthand tell you you can put a person if you don't know what you're doing you can put a person in a really fucked up situation where they end up self-harming because of that situation because they weren't they weren't ready and they weren't working with a team that they needed and all that i say is truth you want to ask me questions i'm a female i live in la i will tell you the truth i will tell you like a lot of my girlfriends are sugar babies a lot of them do only fans a lot of my clients i build websites for girls that do only fans so that they don't have to pay 20 percent to only fans and they keep all of the profit so if you ask me questions i'll give you my truth and my different experiences for example i have hooked up with guys that i was not interested in because they brought something of value to the table that made me intrigued and they were strong and powerful and i was like oh shit, i want to suck your dick i have also been with the really hot guys that like took me for granted i've also been approached by guys that had sick game and i fucking fell for it and i watched myself fall for it and i was like damn that was good game like right. i even clapped for him can, so, can, I, can I ask a question like this be yeah from a lot of whatever guys, you want <laughs> a lot of guys experience um there's a screening process before a guy's even able to talk to a woman usually like i think a lot of guys can vouch for this or was he really a no way or was he just I an unlikely god, candidate i swear to motherfucking god this dude was in no way <laughs> all right like, but, like only you know the answer to that question so i'm not gonna probe too much more that's but that's why i'm laughing about it because like i've told my partner angelus like we talked about it on the great Poe, where i told i like talk about this stuff on there of like i can't believe this happened like i'm like the worst part also i'm like kind of like too deep <sighs> fuck it i say everything anyways i swear to god so like all this happened right and i'm like fuck it like we're, we're about to do the deed i got a one pump chump not a two pump but a one pump chump all that shit for fucking nothing. Not only was it someone that I wasn't going uh, to go with. Kind of bait. He's efficient. I know. <laughs> He's efficient, man. <laughs> yeah, well, that's inefficient, bro. You put in all that work just for one pump. And Damn, great, bro. Yeah, he like, got what he wanted and got out. <laughs> one pump. All that time wasted. One this. pump. Oh, and no. I'm gonna tell you this. And he could have had another shot. 100%. He could have had another shot. But as we were talking, he did something where I explained it earlier, where he's joking and making all these jokes. And I turned around and used one of his own jokes on him and he took it too far. And I was like, never fucking oh, yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. So he disqualified, he, he disqualified right. himself. He yeah. disqualified himself. And that's that, like, would you, Mika, would you say that was a shit test? We gotta use their vernacular. When, when you, uh, who can explain a shit test? <laughs> I don't I mean, like that, when a girl that wouldn't necessarily be a shit test, but it's more so like it's that guy sabotaging, I guess. You know what I mean? So oh, she okay. asked, so 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 actually I take that back. If she asked the question to test whether this guy believes in the thing that would be a huge turnoff to her, and then she says it, then yeah, that would technically be a shit test. Yeah, yeah. but there, there, there is some, there is something I agree with Minka though, is it the be the better experience is gonna teach a lot better than one-on-one -on -one coaching and like i'm sure a lot of us have experience talking to people the social calibration kevin you mentioned you were in sales duke you mentioned you built that up uh i think you said you worked it but you still had to call on the phone with a lot of people and then you were, yeah were but adored. before it i was in the car i was in the car business and then okay, before that I spoke a lot nice. of people were self-made dj yeah. lots of work and then minka you brought up your speech and debate so we all have experience and i'm sure that that has taught us a lot more than what any advice that we've heard from a person well, and that's why I say these things because it's so easy to get caught up in the like semantics of it. And, and the worst thing that we can do, and, and I do this, everybody does this. I don't give a shit who you are. Everyone does this. If you have something you really want, whether it's pussy, money, job, whatever, if you, the more you think about it without taking action, the more you're going to psych yourself out of it. You have five seconds, not like neural through your neurons. You have five seconds. The moment you want to do something, you have five seconds to take some sort of action towards doing it before that self-sabotaging talk brings you back in to prevent you from doing that thing. So what I like to do, one of the things that I really, and I, this is me personally, I don't train, like I've given this to people, do what you will with it. I pick up a, a time where I was the most scared 
and the most vulnerable. So a couple of them is like one when I was in kindergarten and I would introduce myself to people and say, hi, my name's Anna. That's how I still introduce myself to this point. Or like, hi, my name's Mika or hi, my, whatever my name I'm giving them, right? And like, uh, it's for different events. For networking, I go with Anna for work and like for my life, I'm Mika. Uh, that's like, I have a marketing agency, so it's a little, I look like a hooker on Instagram, so I have to mm. keep it a little separated. Uh, different kind of marketing. <laughs> yeah. No, like actual digital marketing, like SEO and websites. And no, I'm just coding. saying like a different, different aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different, yes. Exactly. No, you're right. You're right. My bad. Um, so, and the other aspect is if I'm really, really scared is if I remember being five years old and jumping from the biggest, um, there were two dive boards in the swimming, the public swimming pool when I was growing up. I was five years old when I started jumping off of the really tall one. But I remember looking down and being fucking terrified and jumping anyways. And so what I do now is when I'm really scared of something, like I've approached guys and I've been scared and I've been like, <sighs> and I picture that same moment right as I'm about to jump off the board and I say, fuck it. And I go and do it because I have five seconds to make that decision. And that's why I say these things. I'm not a fucking professional coach. I'm not going to charge people for this. I have a day job. But what I like to do is speak truth so that people can make their own decisions and go at whatever pace they're comfortable with. If you want to hire someone to walk you through it, do it. If you want to go fucking watch videos and like do that, do it. Like whatever you, makes you happy. You know what I mean? You only have one life that we die. Well, and who knows what the fuck that, happens? That's facts. Because I mean, those same things can be applied in sales too. I mean, I, I do that before I even like even have to. I have a thought. I just do it. That, that's why I like my yeah. like. My, and I've been done it all so much over the years that like my personality is morphed to that where I just say it without even thinking so like yeah. you know you, you just you know, not even say it but you just jump right in it i'm like i, I just get immersed yeah. in it and can you say answer, you answered the coach. question hang on, hang on hang on you answered the question experience we all have experience and where is experience gathered from the world and what have we all been preaching brothers need to go out there and experience yeah. the fucking world yeah Join world is your lab thing or go 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 do something with people where you have to engage with people go put yourself in uncomfortable positions man like literally you, you, your whole job is to be uncomfortable like that's what it is get get comfortable with being uncomfortable that's what you need preach to and, and, and everybody here no one else is not like and, and we're all in agreement that a lot of these guys are uh, on the red pill space they don't preach that a whole lot, right? And but here's the thing: to be fair, a lot of these guys in these other spaces talking about faces and shit. A lot of them, I don't see that shit either. Go out and get your experience. Do, do, do it. There's no nothing else. Literally, you can save yourself like a ton of fucking headache. You either learn or you go out there. But either way, you need to have experience. So I, that's why when I when I hear these different things, I'm just like, you clearly don't have this because if you did, you would have you would be way more based than you are right now. That's how yeah, I can they're... tell. Mm -hmm. I can tell because I, I like. Yeah. I don't know. That's why I have to keep repeating myself. Do I live in the real world? Am I the only one doing this? Like, what, what is going on? I'm coming here. And people are really thinking this way. I got grown adults thinking this way. Are you? Are we serious right now? Like, what the? Where, where, where are we fucking come to? Like, honestly, it's it's like it's like fun to clown y'all, but I even see behind the scenes sometimes it's just sad. Like, I I, I look I low key feel sad. Yeah, I like, like... This, this is where it's come to. I agree with you because it's I it's. <sighs> I was telling Angela this, like, I got really depressed because I'm, like, looking around and, like, people are shitty. They're, like, goddamn shitty. And if they're not shitty, they're just don't, they're, like, stuck in a hole, but they don't take any actions to, like, move forward in their lives. And it's, it's, I just, I, I like I said before, like, I had my neighbor, she passed away last, like, uh, two weeks ago now. And she had just been left by her husband for a younger girl. She was trying to start her own business. I was trying to help her with that. And she died. And she left behind three kids. And it's like, it's stuff like that that we need to remember that like, it's right around the corner at any fucking point. She was only 40. She was only yeah, 40 we, years old. Uh, and like, that's a part of, that's a part of. We all have to get right because we're not thinking right now. You got to get right. All you got is today. Once you die today, what can anyone say that they can say of you? Exactly. Like, like who's going to show up there at your funeral? Some of y'all want to be isolated so bad that the best time that you would really want people around is when you're about to leave. Mm -hmm. The best time where you really wish that you wanted people who you around you, you could trust is when you're about to leave for good. Jesus Christ, man, wake the fuck up, people. All this shit that we fighting over, all this shit we all know is petty shit. It's petty. 
That's why, like, 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 uh, like, and I'm not even entertainment mode right now. I'm like dead ass serious, bro. Cause like QB Loki, bro, I love you, dog. Like, but you killed that shit out of me. I, I can't even be entertaining right now. But I gotta be real with y'all. Like, this is this has to stop. Like, we have to grow the fuck up. Like, at some point, we gotta grow up, people. Like, we gotta. We all know deep down what needs to be done. Some of y'all doing some things to skirt certain ways, and some of you guys are avoiding certain things for for uh, for, for certain consequences. It doesn't matter. Y'all know what's ahead. Look in the fucking mirror. That's all we gotta do. We gotta stop this shit. Like we have to. And, and if that's part of having these discussions, that's just gonna make it happen. Absolutely. So with that being said, guys, uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead <laughs> and uh, we'll start with you. What are your thoughts on the show? Uh, then we'll go to self made. Shout out to you, and then we'll wrap this sucker up. All right. Go ahead, Kadisi. I, I mean, I love having comments. I can't wait for our conversation. All, all oh yeah, it's gonna be fun. And I want I want awesome. you to get deep, man. Like like. Like it's fun to be entertaining and all, but I want you to pick any topic you want. Like it doesn't have to be what's trending. I, listen, I don't plan for yourself. anything, dude. Like I, I'm like, listen, like, I live my like my like moment, like living. In, I take that to a whole new level, bro. I don't plan for a lot of my shit. A lot of my Hell shows, yeah. there's no plan. A lot of the collabs, the high profile collabs I've done so far, no plan. Like literally, just going there. I have conversations. Like literally, that that's how you listen. I've have when you're out in experience. I just want to talk to you. That's all it is. I'm genuinely mm -hmm. interested. That's why, like, like even guys, like uh, the guys in the chat and all these other different people, I'm genuinely interested. I don't have an agenda. I don't have anything. I ain't got time for that. I want to know what's going on in your universe right here, because I can only understand mine. But based on the conversation, we can share. We can share knowledge. We can share ideas, and then go from there. I don't have to go here agreeing with you. You don't have to go agreeing with me. But we can we can have some point where okay I understand where that person's coming from he understands mine so we're not living in echo chamber that's the big 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 problem oh yeah so Caduceus continue please and then we're gonna have to we're doing final up. words right now is that what you're saying yeah final words final words final, final words. words I'm glad that we ended with this topic thanks for having me on um anytime bro like always value experience over generalizable theories because we're all individuals and no one is average in every regard so the generalized theories aren't always going to apply for you treat the world like your lab come up with your own hypotheses and test them in the real world uh and always take the output objectively Duke brought up a big one. You likely are going to die. Like 99.99999% chance you're probably going to die because everyone else before you has died. Yeah. And people around <laughs> you are dying. So like, that's that's a driving force to test out what you want to find out. Cheers, yeah. fellas. Gra Grave Cheers. are full of people who, uh, who wish they could have tried but didn't. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Mika? You're hot when you're mad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, like some of these ladies. See, this is why, I, man. I, I mean, some of the girls I used to attract back then, bro. You mm. back then, you look like a sec now. Yeah, I'm telling you, bro. Like I'm telling you, they be trying I to. I know you have those up. morals, though. Yeah, I forgot yeah, I gotta, that conversation. I gotta, I gotta get my. I'll say this. I will say this, just so you guys know. Like, no cap. Like before coming on, when you said, I was like, put me in, coach. I didn't, I didn't think you were gonna send the link. You sent it. And I was like. <laughs> you know like but i yeah. i get scared too and so i like come in and i fucking do it because i like to one of the things that someone said is that the more secrets that you have the less confident that you are and that kind of stuff it was like an old lady or an old dude one time that told me that and that kind of stuck it's not relevant it's not something profound but i found it to be true so everything i say is like from my real life there's no like facade i'm not selling anything it's just it is what it is you know what i mean so I just uh, wanted to say that so that people know, like, everybody gets scared to just fucking do it. Fucking yeah, it. no, like, that, that's the thing, though, because, like, having you on there, because because we could all argue game manipulation. I know. Like, Everyone was you know, like, I, I mean, got let, a bigger game. Let's, let's have a, yeah, because the guys, because then that's how we are. That's how that naturally is. And realistically, that that's why, that's, that's a beautiful driving force of this right and i hope it does it that this element doesn't stop the only part that i would that that we can change is this right here where we can at least shake hands and part friends right that that's what it is because exactly. people love this shit let's just be real all right the back and forth the arguing different points kadis is going at you you going back Kevin Ryder tagging in and just doing this shit. Like, people love that. And that's still going to continue because we have different ideas. And they still have to combat. It's not a, a one-idea wins all. It's a consistent battle to the top. 
And when yeah. you, when there's a new idea, there's another competing one right below it. And the only way it gets disingenuous is when this guy up here refuses to fight over here. That's why I applaud what Donovan Sharp does, even though I come up here and clown him all the time. And matter of fact, I only clown him when he does shit like closing shit down. But when you have beautiful conversations, that's all that matters because we got to keep it on task. But yeah. No, we gotta oh. do it like that, man. But go ahead. Anything else you gotta have uh, before we go to Kevin? Yeah, one more thing because my uh, podcast husband will kill me if I don't fucking say it. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. from the I'm from the Great Hill Podcast. We're on it on Saturdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm so fucking garbage with that shit. God damn! But I did it. <laughs> I did it. There you go. There you go. <laughs>